Hey there Maple Nuts, today I got you another educational video. In this video, we are going to find out why trees grow more in the ground than in pots. There gotta be a reason, right? A lot of people really don't know why, right? And it's okay, because we are about to find out. This right here is my Inaba Shadari. I have one here on a pot, obviously, and I have another one in the ground. Take a good look at it. It did put some good growth throughout spring, like this branch right here, this branch right there, this branch right here, right? It put some decent growth and I am very happy for it. However, the one in the ground put a lot more growth. In fact, it is fall and it's putting a massive growth right now. Here are three Tamukiyamas. I have one right here, one right there, and another one right there. We are gonna take a closer look at all three of them. Just like the Inaba Shidari, the my Tamukiyama put massive growth throughout spring. This tree did put a little bit of growth throughout summer, but now you can't even tell, right? Keep in mind, it's about to push a little bit new growth in some areas. And that is because the temperatures has cooled down a little bit and these Japanese maple are getting a break from all the heat that we got. Let's go ahead and look at my last Tamukiyama that I have on a pot. By the way, I'm shaping this branch, giving it like a swirl uh, shape. But anyways, going back to the topic, pretty much about the same thing, right? Let's go and look at my trees that I have in the ground. Guys, check at the trees that I got on the ground. Inaba Shidari, Tamukiyama right here. Look at that, guys. Tons of no growth. The trunk has grown thicker. It had put way more no growth. Overall, this plant is growing way faster, more vigorous, more resilient, and more resistant to the elements, to the seas, and to pests. Believe it or not. Check it out. Look at how beautiful. Wow, those these leaves are just amazing. There's a difference in the color, right? Check this color out and check this color out. You can never mimic the microbiology in the ground on a pot. And I'm going to explain to you why you can never do that. Okay, going back to my potted plants. You see the difference, right? It hardly grew versus the one in the ground. It's growing faster, more vigorous, more resilient, more resistance to the harsh weather, to the environment to the seas, to fungi, you name it. It's overall in a much better condition than in a pot. There's a reason why, okay? And going back to my prisoner analogy, your plant is your prisoner. And that is a jail cell. Your plant depends on you 
for 100% of all its needs. You have to feed it, you have to water it, you are responsible for providing medical treatment when these plants get sick. Same with a prisoner, you are responsible for feeding it, for providing water and medical assistance whenever that prisoner is sick. Versus if you were to release that prisoner into the wild, that prisoner is able to sustain itself. If you were to put this plant on the ground, this plant will be able to sustain itself a lot better. That is one of the reasons why. The second reason is what I believe to be the main reason why your plants are growing way more in the ground than in pots. And it's simple guys, it is simple. It comes down to microbiology. You will never be able to mimic the same amount of microbes that there is on the ground in a pot. Even if I were to put this tree on the native soil that I have, right? If I were to bring some soil here and put it there, you still not be able to mimic that, okay? Because that soil now is encased around a piece of plastic or concrete or whatever your pot is made of and is not able to replace itself, right? Versus in the soil, if for some reason, and this is probably impossible to do, if for some reason all the microbes die at the root system of this plant right here, other microbes are able to crawl back in and replace those. Here, not so much, right? But then again, that is impossible. You would not be able to kill those microbes unless you put some sort of acid or very harsh chemical there, but you're not gonna do that, right? Right now, at this very moment, there are more living microbes in my hand than people on earth and wrap your nuts around that okay there's a whole lot going on in the root system of your plants there's good microbes there are bad microbes there are, the good microbes are forming partnerships with your plants symbiotic relationships those microbes are providing your plant with the ammonium or the nitrate that it needs to survive. In exchange, these plants are sending down from the leaf all the way down to the root system. It's sending down sugars that those microbes need for energy in order to continue devouring the organic material that is going to turn into plant food. It is an infinite process. One depends on the other. If one dies, the other dies. There are also bad microbes there, pathogenic microorganisms in your soil. But the good news is that there are way less pathogenic microbes than good microbes way less and those microbes are kept in check by the good microbes but the coin can turn if you, i were to constantly over water this tree pathogenic microbes strive in anaerobic conditions and they start multiplying it turns the whole thing around now you have more pathogenic microbes then good microbes and those pathogenic microbes starts attacking the good microbes keeping them in check and at the same time those pathogenic microbes are hostile to the plant starts attacking the root system and that's how you start getting root rots and all types of disease that is what's happening when your plant starts getting sick 
or dying. So the microorganisms in the soil plays a huge part on why your plants are growing faster, more vigorous, more resilient, resistance to the harsh elements, disease, pests, fungi, you name it, all right? And the third reason is temperature, guys, temperature. The earth is the biggest heat sink that we got. It's able to regulate its temperature versus on a pot. I don't think it's going to do too well, right? If today is 85 degrees, all right? I don't know the temperature today, but let's just say that today's 85 degrees. And then tomorrow morning, the temperature goes to 40. And you check the temperature on your pot, it's going to be close to 40 at that time in the morning, right? Versus if you go and put a large, a long probe in the ground and measure the temperature, it's going to be hotter there. So the ground is able to regulate temperature a lot more than in a pot. Therefore, it's able to sustain more microbes than in a pot. Now, if you were to add microbes in this pot through compost teas, through those little cups or little bottles of microbes that you mix with water and you throw it there thinking that you're putting more microbes there, then guess what? Just like uh, Robert Pavlis said in one of his YouTube videos, the cup is always full in the ground and in your pots. Whatever microbes are inside this pot right now is whatever it can handle. The stadium is full. Look, if you wanted to go to a movie theater, right? And that movie theater is full and you go to the counter and said, I want, I want a ticket because I want in. At the counter, they're gonna tell you, it is full, I am so sorry, you cannot go in. Same thing right here. At all times, the cup is full. Now in the ground, you can do a couple of things, right? And the pots too, all right? You can add other elements and the microbes will automatically adjust themselves to what they got. If you got very sandy soil, you probably don't have a whole lot of microbes there because they need organic material to survive. So you can add the organic material that they need instead of adding microbes. If you add microbes, you just, as soon as they touch the ground, they're just gonna die. They don't have food, right? So what about add organic material? Add a small layer every year of organic material and you're slowly gonna start changing your soil composition and the microbes will come in automatically without how you having to use a compost tea or microbes on a little bottle. So that is it guys. I hope that today you have a better understanding on why your trees are doing so much better in the ground than in pots. And that there's a reason why I'm making this video. I believe that if you get educated more on soil science, you will become a much better gardener. With that, I have nothing else for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay naughty, my friends. Peace.